Hey everybody, it's Justin from Bittnerbilt, and today we are going to be tackling organization of our small stuff. Our screws, nails, bolts, uh, bits and bobs, all sorts of little stuff uh, that we have here in the shop. I want to make myself a nice little hardware store. We're in a ugly corner of my shop that I never really show on camera. This is a, a cabinet that I built out of scraps long ago, uh, and it was for four golf club sets. Uh, we've decided to put them somewhere else. So. In the meantime, what I want to do is just drawer after drawer after drawer after drawer, really low profile, no more than like three inches tall, one after another of all of my small parts stuff. I want to just fill this thing as tight as I can. Now, I thought, hey, I'm just going to do it the way I like it. But you know what? You might not like the way that I like it. So what I've challenged myself to do is that pretty much on every shelf, I'm going to try something different. I'm going to use a 3D printer to print out a different system. I'm going to use my laser engraver to cut out wood boxes. I'm going to use my CNC machine. I'm even going to buy stuff off of Amazon, different organizing um, setups, and we'll see what works. I'm interested to play around with it, and, you know, maybe this mix might be the perfect solution. Maybe not. Uh, I'll also try and keep track of the cost, or at least estimated cost, of what it would be to do it all in one of these systems. Uh, so that you get a good idea of what your investment is. And, um, you know, hopefully out of this, you're going to find a good organizing system that works for you for your small parts stuff. So let's organize the small things today on Bittner Bill. Our very first shelf is going to be a sorting tray. You need a place to be able to throw all the screws, bolts, whatever that you find around the shop and you don't know where it goes. So what we're doing is we're cutting out a whole bunch of sorting areas on here. This is where I'll throw all my spare stuff and then when I have time to attend to it, I'll be able to sort through it and figure out what containers they go to. After the CNC work was done, I glued and amply clamped down my sorting table. I then glue on a solid piece of pine to the front of each drawer and using a 45 degree router bit, I uh, make more of a recessed area for the label for each one. That way it's pointing up instead of out. It'll be easier to read. And here is our sorting tray. So as you can see, I can just chuck nails, screws, bolts, whatever I want on here. And then it's easy for me to kind of sort them into an area before I take them out and retrieve them. I have some small little bins in the front. Uh, over here on the side, I have my bolt tester, so I can check nuts and bolts with these, both imperial and metric. I can use my bolt sizer right here, so if I were to take a bolt of some sort, here we go, put it on here, it tells me that it's an 18, M18. Now, this guy right here is for screws, so it'll tell me if it's number 4, 6, 8, 10, how long it is. Uh, it makes it pretty easy. Same type of thing, you just put the screw there. For shelves two, three, and four, I did a 3D printed product called Gridfinity. It is free. There are thousands of files out there. So all you have to do is download it and hit print on your 3D printer and you have organizational systems. So um, it's not just bins too. It is all sorts of tool holders. The sky's the limit. There's so much stuff with this. You should check out their website. I'll have it linked below. But the overall basis of Gridfinity is whatever you're printing out, it fits on one of these grids and it can be whatever size grid you want. Uh, but the grid goes down on the shelf or whatever type of holder you're making. The bottom of the container has the same grid, so it will fit right on here. And so wherever I put it, it's going to hold it in position. So as I have these grids uh, in my drawer, you can either glue these grids down or I just have some screws pushed in so that it gives it tension so it doesn't move. I can put these anywhere. And as you're opening and closing the drawer, they're not moving. It also means that you're going to be able to completely fill this space um, with any sort of type of shapes and sizes you want. So if I have a whole bunch of one type of screw, I can print one of these big two by four units, or I can just print a one for a single unit and move them around. I'll be able to fill up this entire thing. It's very cool. Now with my old system, I was using all these pencil cases and sometimes I would fill up a pencil case and other times I'm only using like one tenth of this. So really all of this is wasted space. It's taking up a lot of space on there. So that's where this system will fully utilize your space to the max. I mean, if you are as crazy about organizing stuff as I am, this is beautiful because instead of using this big one, I can just put it in this small guy and you'd be surprised how much this small guy holds. 
Um, as I've been emptying out all of my uh, pencil cases into this uh, Gridfinity system, this actually is my number one used piece. This and maybe like the one by two, because uh, the one by two will fit a decent sized screw long ways. I was able to empty out a huge amount of these pencil cases into just two shelves. This size shelf, not super big. Um, that's amazing. And this was a floor to ceiling cabinet before uh, with all these pencil cases. So uh, it's a very effective use of space. Now let's talk about price and how long it took me to make these. That's kind of the downer. Um, but you know, if you really want this type of thing, it's okay. For me to print three shelves worth of, and I mean to literally fit every single spot on here, it took me about five days with two printers working just nonstop. And I used about six rolls of filament. If filament's around $13 for the stuff that I use, cheapo filament, uh, it probably cost me around $75-ish uh, to make all of these, the grids and all the bins that I made. Uh, that can be expensive for some people, but this is probably the most customized, uh, specialty advanced, use every little piece of space you possibly can solution. Um, and I really like it because I, I really like customizing things like this. Okay, so we have three 3D printed shelves, and look at that. That is organized. Uh, now, I'm going to change this a little bit, because right now on this shelf, I have all my screws 8 to 12. And then we move to the next one, and we have 4 to 6 nails and lags. And both of these shelves are completely full. That means that as I get more stuff, which inevitably I will, uh, I will not have a place to put it on the appropriate shelf. So what needs to happen is I need to leave a little bit of extra space on each shelf that's unused. That way as I buy new stuff, uh, I'll be able to expand out. I did do that here on my metric bolt shelf. So these are all my small little metric bolts you can see here. Uh, thank you very much to my son Ben who has been making all the little itty bitty labels for all of these things. It is a huge undertaking. We're not finished yet. Um, but uh, uh, special thank you to him for doing that. I love this Gridfinity system. It's awesome. Let's say I buy another pack and I don't have a 4x4 here. I pull these two. I print a 4x4, put it in that place, and now I can house that thing. So um, the right container for the job is available to you just a 3D print away. Next up, we're going the easy route, and I have these plastic trays that I purchased off of Amazon. It was a pack of 42. Uh, for $18, so you get quite a lot for very little. Uh, these trays are sturdy enough. They are kind of thin, plastic, flexible. Um, the feeling that I have with these is you don't want to spend time, but you do want some sort of organizational system. So very cool, you can go with something like this. This particular set that I bought, though, I don't recommend at all. Um, I personally think there are better sets out there. I think I just got stuck on, oh, look, there's a whole bunch of pieces and it's pretty cheap, so that's why I purchased it without thinking. And why I say that is it only comes with three sizes, a one by one, a one by three, and a two by three. So uh, depending, of course, on what your needs are with storage, this was a lot more than what I wanted because we're doing small parts storage. This is just way too big. There also wasn't a one by two, which is probably uh, my most used size along with like a one by one in with all this stuff because again, it's small stuff. So um, there are other sets out there. So I don't want to say, oh, pre-made sets are bad. Um, the one that I bought probably isn't the best. I will say that it does have this locking mechanism tab on the side. So you can put them together, which means they all kind of interlock in the tray, which is good. Um, they're brand new, but yet all the dust in my shop just appears to adhere to them. So I can just see these just being dirty all the time too. So for our store-bought dividers, you can see I tried to use some of my bigger stuff in here, but even in these cases, you still have lots of wasted space. As I had pointed out, if I had had a uh, one by two, so this big, it would have made a lot more sense. And then I'd be able to have more of these cups available so that I can um, you know, store more things. Uh, also over here, these are really, really long, so it doesn't really fit into any of these pre-made things. If I were to custom make something, either with a 3D printer or a laser grave or something, then obviously it will fit. So I'm probably gonna have to move that somewhere else. 
For my second drawer, I try to use a lot more smaller cups uh, in here. What I found with this system too, I didn't have the availability to insanely organize. I just kind of threw all of my bolts that are 1024 here, no matter what the lengths are. Whereas up with like the Gridfinity system, I would have separated them each into their individual lengths. Uh, but this works too. So, you know, you might not want to go as hardcore as I did up on the top shelves. Next up, I'm going to use a laser engraver for the next few shelves to make some custom boxes and uh, a different form factor as well. But I was just sent out this. This is the We Create Vision. Uh, it's a brand new 20 watt laser that's come out. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a review on this at the... Well now. I'm gonna do a little bit of a review on this at the end of the video. Um, we're gonna talk about the pluses and minuses with this laser engraver. Uh, I did not stage that. I, that was very surprising to me that that noise just happened. Um, and we're gonna address that in the, uh, in the review at the end of the video. But I have been using this for the past week nonstop uh, to make all the different laser stuff in this uh, video. I will also say, wow, that was very much like my Elon Musk at the Cybertruck thing happening there. I didn't, it kind of threw me off. <laughs> what I meant to say was, um, I have been using it for a week. You heard that right. And that's because uh, making these out of wood, you're making puzzle pieces. And so in addition to spending the time doing the cutting, which isn't very long, it only takes about three and a half minutes to cut one of these boxes, then you have to sit there and glue it up and hold it as you're gluing everything up. Uh, and so this does take quite a bit of effort. Uh, I do have to say that I got my sons involved because it was just taking so long. So thank you very much to Ben and Owen for helping me out with this. Uh, they sat here and made a whole bunch of boxes. And then what we found works best was you wrap a rubber band around it after you get it all glued up and assembled like this. And then the rubber band holds it taut until the glue dries. Um, from a price perspective on these wooden units, it takes about a half a sheet of plywood to make one shelf of these uh, holders in various sizes. That is not as little as I thought it would be, but uh, a one quarter inch sheet of plywood is about $25. And so we're looking, you know, somewhere around the like 12, 13, $14 range, depending on what sizes you're using per shelf. And that's not that bad, but time investment is pretty high. Uh, in the 3D printer stuff, I just hit print and when I came back to it, it was done. So it did take a long time to print these items over the course of like five days, but it really involved zero labor on my part. This one, you have about three and a half minutes per holder times, you know, 40 holders-ish. Um, so a, lot of, a large amount of time and then a long time to glue them up. So this one is very, very labor intensive. We're here on a free website called makercase.com, completely 100% free. That's very awesome of the creator. Thank you for that. So uh, here we can make simple boxes and we're gonna return to do this box with dividers later. So we click on simple boxes and it asks us how big do we wanna make it? So, uh, you know, you could do any sizes you want you could make it five in the width. So very long box. I'm just gonna do a two inch by two inch by 2.8 inch tall. And I want that dimension to be on the outside of the box. That way all of the boxes match up no matter what uh, orientation of dimensions I do. I can change in my material thickness. I can make it open or closed. So closed would give it a, uh, a lid up there. And then I can say, do I want it to be flat walls? Do I want finger joints or do I want T? Uh, I think I'm gonna go with finger and then you can use this slider to change how many fingers you have on there. So you can have a ton. Uh, or you could just have a few. So I think two is pretty good for this small box. You just hit download and then it gives you the files right here. You go ahead and you download an SVG. Before you do that, you might want to go and disable the labels because we don't want it engraving the words on here. Um, they're pretty easy to know what piece is what piece. All right, we have our small wooden cups here. Now, 
Uh, when I printed the 3D printed ones, the smallest ones are, I believe, one and a half by one and a half. So when I designed this, I made these a little bit bigger. Uh, our smallest here is two inches by two inches. So I made everything fit along a two inch grid pattern. Uh, there is no grid at the bottom holding everything there. So you can see that from me sliding this in, all of these have slid back and there's now a gap here. I can solve that by putting just a piece of scrap wood in the back and it won't be able to move forward, but I just wanted to point it out. Uh, I made these bigger because I knew that I had a lot of volume items like uh, my anchors and stuff. So I figured this was gonna be a good way to do it. I had intended to do two full shelves of these wooden cut cups, but I gotta tell you just the production time was so long that I stopped after one shelf because I was like, you know what, this is just too much work for what I'm doing. Uh, but before I moved on to the next item, I did also try it out of cardboard. So this is a viable option um, with one major drawback, let's say. Uh, so it definitely supports weight. I mean, what do we get our screws and nails in usually when we purchase them? They're in a cardboard box. So cardboard is strong enough to hold what we want. The negative here, in addition to the assembly time, when you cut the cardboard, you expose that, you know, wavy interior structure pattern. When you're gluing this together, that's not a lot of surface area for the glue to adhere to. So I can see that inherently being pretty weak. This one, surprisingly, is very strong, but, um, you know, I still have some of my reservations about it, but I wanted to show it because, you know, I tried it out. Uh, something that came to me that definitely shortened my assembly time, but still used the laser engraver for this, was to make more of a sorter tray. So uh, that same website, you can plug and chug all the numbers in here and it will spit out a tray of any divider size that you want. Um, I could not fit the entire shelf inside the uh, vision here. So what I did was I divided it into two trays per shelf, uh, each one being four by three. Now, when I assemble this, I could put this in and I'm just rough holding stuff and I could have 12 same size boxes here or depending on what I'm sorting, I could leave one of these out and now I have that. Uh, or I could even take this over the saw and just cut it out and only, you know, divide out two of these. So there are some modularity options with this. I would recommend that these interior dividers you don't glue down, uh, you just leave loose. That way, as your needs change, you could pull these out, cut them, make new ones, etc. Uh, but leaving the exterior structure of the tray complete. This took about 12 minutes to cut all of this. It took three passes. So, you know, one for the bottom one for the sides and one for the interior. Um, so production time was not that bad. And then I only had to assemble two of these trays. So maybe about seven or eight minutes uh, each. So much, much less in production. It also uses less wood than what we were doing over here because you know, we were just using so many pieces that have wood butting up against wood, uh, which in this case is a waste. You know, you could use one single piece of wood as that dividing wall. So this only uses about a third of a sheet of plywood to fill up the exact same amount of space. Um, obviously I have larger uh, cubes, but you know, I could have made them smaller. But you know, that means that we spent a lot less money on this one, probably for a shelf, you know, being around $9. We're back at makercase.com, so we're gonna to go to boxes with dividers. So this will make us a open tray. So uh, we can say how long we want the box to be. So I want this box to be 15 inches by uh, 20 inches, maybe something like that. So pretty big. And I want the height of the box to be 2.8. So everything matches up. Uh, then we're going to import our material thickness, but it asks us how many dividers for rows and columns do we want? So we could make this really small, even if we want to and go like seven by uh, five, something like that. So really small, or we could keep it, you know, really long ones in case we're doing a lot of longer bolts or something like that. Pretty cool. Uh, again, we can do our finger size on this. so. Let's see if we can zoom in here and rotate it. You see these fingers right here where the glue up is going to happen. So we can make it super finger heavy. 
uh, or we can just make it a few. I recommend going on the fewer note. Um, it's just a lot more glue and it's going to be a very solid surface uh, when you glue it up. So download your box plans, gives you all your pieces. It tells you exactly where they need to be. Uh, I turn off the labels, hit download SVG and you're done. I've done three drawers with trays on them. You can see on this one, I kept them, um, you know, all in the small configuration. For this one, I made two of them larger. That way I could house a lot of my extra stuff. And then on shelf two, we have a lot of, uh, you know, my woodworking extra doorknobs, hinges, stuff of that nature. And then on my last one, I actually have so much extra space right now that this whole one is pretty much empty, which I'm happy about. And this is some of my electrical connectors. Um, I've made a lot of storage space with this unit. And so I'm very happy that I've stored everything away and I still have extra space for, of course, inevitably when I buy more stuff. We're getting down to the bottom here. And uh, so this is kind of an overflow one for me, but what I want you to focus on is the fact that I kept these small containers um, as they are in here. So these aren't ones that I came up with. I bought this set. So this set has just tons and tons of these little uh, steel dowel pins. I predominantly use these for 3D printing assembly. And honestly, these small little cubbies are smaller than the 3D printed cups. So if I had transplanted this into the smallest containers that I've used in this system, I would still be wasting space. So this is actually a more effective container for this stuff. So, you know, why not have it out on this shelf? Um, you know, it obviously didn't cost me anything extra. It didn't have to build anything extra. Just the fact that I have all these drawers that are so compact and put together like this, um, this is a pretty good use of the space. All things must come to an end, and so our very bottom drawer uh, has the same pencil cases that I've been using. Now, these pencil cases, or eraser cases, whatever they're called, um, is about the size of your standard box of screws or nails that you buy at the big box store. So you could either do this, or you could just have those same boxes stacked up on their side all the way around, and then you're not spending anything. These pencil cases are only 50 cents a piece, so they are pretty cheap, though when you look at the cost of this entire uh, drawer here, I have 43, so you know, it'd be 2150 to buy all of these, but they are reusable, they're clear so you can see what you're doing, and you can put a label on the side. Uh, I am actually really surprised at how many I was able to fit on here, because on that whole floor to ceiling shelf next to my table saw, I had a hundred of these, and that's all that could fit I couldn't reach all of them because some of them were hidden by the end of the table saw and it became a big jumbled mess. I'm able to get half of them on one of these drawers. So overall, putting very close together drawers in a cabinet like this is huge for small parts organization. You can really, really fit so much in here. All right, we've done all of our drawers. It's time to talk about this. We create vision laser engraver. This engraver with its air assist is $1,300. Uh, if you add in the air purifier and the rotary chuck set, which gets installed inside to be able to do cylindrical stuff like tumblers, uh, it takes you up to around $1,800 currently. Uh, so this is a class one rated laser. If you have watched my channel before, you know that I will not review open laser engravers anymore. I personally think that all engravers need to have an enclosure with them when you buy them for safety. And this does have that. So uh, A plus on that, it has uh, a pretty good viewing angle top, uh, but you know, unfortunately nothing in the front, which it is a little tall. So it does shrink down usually uh, using that leveling system that it has. Uh, but I think you probably wanna put this on something that's a little bit shorter than your typical counter height unit. I actually put it on a rolly cart on the floor uh, when I was using it, I found that that was a pretty good angle for me. Uh, this unit has a 20 watt diode laser in there and currently there are no other uh, modules that you can put in with this, but this is a company where this is their first laser product that they've come out with. So I'm sure they're gonna be expanding upon this product as time goes on. Uh, but currently it is only a 20 watt. 20 watt is good because it is 
Very, very good for engraving. It obviously holds you back a little bit from cutting thicker materials, but as you get to a more powerful laser, that beam, the kerf of it actually increases, just like you would see uh, the blade on your table saw kerf, that gap gets a little bit wider. So uh, 20 watt is seen as the best current size for diodes in the engraving space. Uh, some pros and cons. Uh, as we saw in the, earlier in this video, you heard some noise when this was raising up. And actually, I had practiced it three times before then, and that noise hadn't occurred. Basically, I had it go down into its low state, I kicked it on, I started talking so it would rise up, and you'd see the magic of this machine rising up. Uh, I can't tell you what that noise was. Uh, it was obviously something racking in here. I have a concern in the long term on this machine where the more moving parts you incorporate into something, the more possibilities you have for failure long term. And considering that the entire enclosure moves up and down and that is its focusing mechanism, I don't know how it's going to be if ever like impacts happen to this machine in a corner or something. If it throws everything off, it's completely unusable at that point and will have to be repaired and serviced and whatnot. So um, there's nothing wrong with this machine. Um, it was just some noise. It was probably something going farther than it was supposed to. But uh, that does give you a pause and concern, obviously. Uh, I will say that the unit itself has this bristle brush um, edging all the way around. And that is to facilitate uh, trying to keep the smoke inside. This unit, even when I have it either hooked up to this or to my very powerful six inch inline duct fan, uh, I smell smoke when I'm engraving this machine. So as I look around, there are these rubber gaskets that are here, but they're kind of loose and out. Um, there are places, there's lots of places for smoke to escape, and it does, even when I have powerful suction going into here. So that is something also to consider if it's going in your home. Now, from a cutting and engraving perspective, it has done a excellent job. I used it to do everything in here, which, I mean, a lot, a lot of cutting. Uh, all of the material that I was cutting was either uh, three millimeter or six millimeter, one quarter inch uh, plywood, uh, pine plywood. And it did a great job. Very little um, uh, charring on the surfaces, very little cleanup needed afterwards. So excellent job there. Uh, I have encountered though something that many other people have encountered as well and it is a slight issue with the camera system. Now all lasers that I've tested with the camera system have a little bit of deviation with them. It's not perfect perfect. Uh, what I found with this camera, if you're placing something in the center of this machine it'll be dead on perfect. What you see on the computer based on the camera positioning, when you engrave it, that's where it's going to be. If you move over to the corners, however, I believe that since this camera is completely stationary, it has to be a fisheye lens. So that means that it kind of curves out and it distorts a little bit as you get to the corners. So when I placed something, I was engraving some of my business cards. I was putting a QR code on the back. If I did it up in the top corner, it moved it over to the side. It wasn't in the exact position where it showed it on the software to be. That's not a problem if you're putting an entire sheet of wood in here and so it's cutting something out and the engravings inside that cut out. It will all come out perfect. But if you're placing in a pre-made item like this, so you can see my shape here, it did not center my logo on here. That is a problem. When I did the QR code in this video, when I had it in the middle, it went exactly where it needed to be. But when I put it up in the top left corner, uh, it had it off center, off center enough where it's noticeable. So uh, that is something that I hope that they correct in the software going forward. Um, I'm sure you can compensate for that in the software. I made sure that I'm fully up to date with all my firmware and software settings and stuff. Uh, and again, I calibrated several times, but I was encountering that up in the corners. From a software perspective, they include their own custom software. It is very beginner friendly, uh, but also has some more important advanced features like layers. Um, you can hook this up to Lightburn, supposedly. 
but I do think that with a lot of the custom features, a lot of people will at least start in the WeCreate um, software that's custom for this machine. One gripe though that I have about this machine slash its use with the software is uh, every single time that I open this lid or I complete an engraving, I need to do the autofocus again where it comes out and lowers itself down to get into position. If I'm doing a lot of the exact same things, like I'm using the exact same wood for all hundred of these boxes that I've cut out, well, every single time that I take that out and put another one in, I have to wait a minute for it to do this auto-focusing again, even though it's going to end up at the exact same setting every single time, because I'm just repeating the same process again and again and again. That's an extra hundred minutes that I have to take to you know, just wait for this machine to accomplish the tasks that I want. So hopefully that will get uh, addressed in future software updates. Lastly, we have no pass-through option on this. Uh, so if you need to engrave something that's very long, um, we have currently no option for a conveyor system in here. If I tip this up, uh, there is a tray that comes out exposing the laser. So if you did have a very, very tall product, you probably can put this up on like some support blocks of your own making uh, and the actual engraving bed is open at that point. So, um, you know, you do have the possibility of being able to engrave on much taller stuff over what this machine can already do, which is a pretty impressive height. So that was my thought on the We Create Vision. I really applaud this company for coming up with a new form factor, for keeping it fully enclosed and safe. And I definitely like the camera, although you do have to make sure that you're conscious about those corners uh, where you're gonna start to see some positioning errors with that. If you wanna check out the We Create Vision, I have it linked down in the description below. I hope you got some good content from our build today, man. It took me way longer than I ever thought it would, but I'm super happy with it. I think I'm going to continue in my off time casually. Uh, I'm gonna make it a mix of all of the Gridfinity stuff and then the large wooden trays. Uh, the wooden trays were not that big of a deal to cut out and assemble. So I'll probably use the Gridfinity stuff for my little stuff and then for bigger applications, I'll use those tray boxes. Uh, and I think it'll come out pretty good. I hope you will like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content today. Uh, that's what really helps me out and grows the channel. And of course, stay safe in the shop. I'll see you in the next video.